I'm Angelina from Philly, and this November, I am not voting for Kamala Harris. I am not voting for Kamala Harris. I am not voting for Kamala Harris. I am not with Kamala Harris. I I am am not not with her. her. I'm not with her. I am not with Kamala Harris. I'm not with Kamala. I am not for Kamala. I am for Donald Trump. I am not with Kamala. I am not with her because she is not with me. Well, the honeymoon is over. Some of us have been arguing there never really was an actual honeymoon. You know, most people, when they get married, there was some kind of like dating and engagement that went on right before the ceremony. Um, You know, there's only one example in all of the Bible where someone got married, woke up on the morning after the honeymoon and realized, this isn't the person I stood at the altar with. Why is this person in the bed with me? That's kind of the way things happen in the Democratic primary. There was a courtship, a dating, and an engagement with Obama Biden, and then Shazam, they switched out the brides, and poof, there's Kamala Camilla thinks she's a hottie Harris, and supposedly this was the greatest thing ever. But now that she has had to speak a little bit, she has shown that she can't really do an interview. And and the American people are finding out about all this, you know, these rules that she has, uh, how the questions have to be asked. And she wants control over editing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even an average American voter that doesn't really absorb themselves in politics the way a lot of us do has got to be looking at that thinking, okay, but what happens when she's got to, like, negotiate with world leaders, Vlad Putin? the president of China, President Eleven. I know it's Peng, but it's spelled Eleven in Roman numerals. Uh, what, what is she going to do? Is she going to ask for a redo? Is she going to say, no, 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 I want to edit that. I want to change that. And the fact that now she's being nailed repeatedly, even by the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media, which doesn't want to keep carrying her water because they're still embarrassed for carrying it for Joe Obama Biden, they're now starting to out her drastic flip-flops. But have no fear. Bernie Sanders is here, and he is going to save Kamala. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Monday. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, and once you are, smack the bell, click the word all, that will give you notification of my rants, my ravings, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Please like and share this video. That's the way that we get the word out that we're here. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of the Afternoon Drive. So the big New York Times post- Labor Day poll dropped, and it basically shows that, you know what? Trump is in the lead. Now, what they're saying is that the the honeymoon phase with Kamala is over, and that now the polls are tightening, and this is a super tight race, and everything comes down to this debate. The Rasmussen polls have said since day one of Kamala getting in that the so-called honeymoon, the euphoric, the, the immediate... Uh, inflation of her popularity and her poll numbers going through the roof that was all inflated and phony. You had, you know, some pollsters out there like, you know, Frank Putz. I know it's Luntz. Um, You know, oh, you know, when it was all Joe Biden still in, you know, Trump was going to crush Biden. And then Kamala got into it's over. It's a brand new ball game. It's a, I, the people, I've just never seen anything like it. Yet every polling group he talked to, nobody was supporting Kamala. Even CNN and all the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media outlets, when they would get groups of people in a studio to talk about who they were voting for, nobody was jumping up and down for Kamala. And then they tried to, you know, show us that she could draw crowds at at rallies just like Donald Trump. And then we find out, well, they were there for the free rap concert. And as soon as she took to the stage and began to speak, other people who were there with cameras watched and showed two-thirds of the crowd leaving while she's speaking. Because they weren't there to hear her. They were there for the rap artist, the free concert. 
Now we find out in certain places like good old Savannah, Georgia, that they were busing people in from Atlanta so they could fill the same arena that Donald Trump filled organically and had double that crowd outside the arena watching him on a jumbotron. Uh, they're paying homeless people and putting them on buses to go to Kamala rallies. Th this whole thing has been exaggerated and inflated. And now even the liberal pollsters and the liberal media pundits are starting to get nervous that, you know, they can't have another election cycle where everybody goes, Shazam, Batman, look at that. Trump just outperformed the polls. They, they, they don't want to do that anymore. They, they, they're, they're done carrying her water. Her interview with CNN, and, and, and the media really doesn't like constantly being dictated to by her people. She, they have basically been instructed they can ask Tim Walls nothing. Well, that's understandable because every day we find out a new lie about this guy. You know, the, he's supposed to be America's dad, and he was the one that, that coined the phrase that was going to end Trump and J.D. Vance because they're weird. And what we're really finding out is he's weird. I mean, he just is weird. You know, his wife enjoyed smelling the cities of Minnesota being burned to the ground during the George Floyd riots because this was this was this was all about ending oppression. Really, what about the fact that you know your police stations are on fire and local businesses and small business owners in your state lost their livelihood, their life savings, lost everything, they're destitute and poverty stricken. All on top of all of the businesses you closed down during the pandemic and just killed business in Minnesota. But it was wonderful. You love smelling that. I mean, the more we find out about this guy, you know, he's a football coach. No, he was an assistant football coach. He went to war. Well, he didn't go to war. He was, he was a, the, you know, the highest rank of, of sergeant there is. Well, no, actually he wasn't. And, you know, now we're finding out that he was this close to getting his PhD and the university where he was at, like, yeah, no, no, no. You know, he left school in 2004, and uh, he's never made any steps to get a PhD. I mean, this guy is one walking lie after another, after another, after another, and he's creeper weird. And this is, you know, the American people are looking at this saying, this is the guy she picked to be vice president. So this is a catastrophe. The fact that even the American people, the average American people, like, why won't she actually sit down and engage with reporters? And, you know, she had to have notes when she was with Dana Bash. And, you know, uh, it, was, it was all scripted and fake. And even when, when we have to see her going into a, into a rest area to get a bag of Doritos, the whole thing is cringe, it's fake. And we find out that moments before she arrived, you know, her team went on ahead of her. They kicked everybody out of the store because they didn't want anybody that might be, shall we say, anti-Harris. Trump doesn't do that. Trump walks in and engages with whoever happens to be there, whether they love him or hate him. You cannot like Donald Trump, but you have to admit he will authentically engage with people. He will answer questions. And so as we head into this debate, and Kamala is flipping and flopping and flailing. You have even the obvious now. CNN can't take it anymore. And I've told you before, as much as they try to be on the outward, this adversarial, they don't like Trump. I said this about Jake Tapper, and now I'm looking at this report and I'm thinking, maybe they secretly really are trying to get the truth out and would like to help Donald Trump. Tonight, K-File investigates. In a new report, you'll see first out front, the K-File team scoured Kamala Harris's tweets and statements going all the way back to 2017. And what they found was more than 50 instances of Harris slamming Trump's border wall. But now, new Harris campaign ads actually showcase that very wall. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels, and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. And on top of critical tweets, Harris also wrote in her 2019 book, quote, there was a bigger reason to oppose the border wall. A useless wall on the southern border would be nothing more than a symbol, a monument standing in opposition to not just everything I value, but to the fundamental values upon which this country was built. 
How could I vote to build what would be little more than a monument designed to send the cold, hard message, keep out? Well, K Files, Andrew Kaczynski joins me now. So, Andrew, I mean, you, you, and you, you all have gone through, I mean, scoured mm -hmm. an incredible amount of material. Tell me more about what you found. Yeah, that's right. We found more than 50 of those, those tweets criticizing the border wall before she used that in her ad. And I want people to take a, a look at just a few uh, of what she said here. She called it wasteful, useless, a waste of taxpayer money, a vanity wall project, a wasteful border wall, a stupid wall, a medieval vanity project, and an unnecessary wall. Uh, and those are really just, I mean, there were more of this, just like 10 or like 50. Uh, but there was really, there was really a lot of this was the common refrain during the campaign. You read that quote where she said it was against everything that not only she stood for, everything uh, America stood for, but and she brought this up a lot. Take a listen to just one instance of that in 2019. It's the president's vanity project. His multi-billion dollar vanity project called a wall is nothing more than a distraction from the fact that he actually hasn't focused on working people in America. He contrived a national crisis around his big distraction. All right, so you go through all of that, you've got all the tweets, and yet all of a sudden in the ads there's pictures of the wall, mm -hmm. and then you went through to look at that wall. Yeah. Like, what is that specific wall that's in her, her campaign ads now? And you found something very interesting about this specific portion of the yeah. wall. And what's, I think what's also really remarkable about this is like, I mean, you heard her talking about it there, though, Trump's wall in his campaign during his presidency, there was really no greater symbol of Trump's presidency than the wall in the way that Democrats were attacking him over the wall and his restrictive immigration policies. So we looked in that ad, and if you look at it, that exact area of wall is in uh, Sasabe, or, or Sasabe, Arizona, and that is a portion of wall that was actually built by Donald Trump. It was built in an area uh, where there was not previous wall. It was actually pretty controversial when they were building it uh, at the time. So just to see that, uh, and then there are other She's using his wall that he built to say, look at what I did, mm -hmm. and, basically. And, and the other images of the wall, uh, we weren't able to pinpoint, but there's there's telltale signs that that was a Trump wall because there's an anti-climbing plate on top that became popularized during the Trump years. It's really incredible reporting. Oh, oh, oh yeah. The wall that she hated and was, and was a vanity project for Donald Trump and wasn't going to do anything, she's now featuring in her ads trying to make it look like she's tough on border security. Stop and think about this. If, if you were a business owner or a manager of a business, and maybe you are, if you had an employee that you hired and they didn't do anything that they were hired to do, but wanted a promotion, you'd be like, no, that's not happening. You're I, I Really, what I ought to do is fire you. Kamala Camilla Hadi Harris has been in the White House, three and a half years, she keeps talking about, we're going to go forward. We're going to turn the page and go forward. What you're saying is you're going forward away from Biden. Trump's got an ad out that is, I, I love this ad, because it absolutely nails her, boat anchors her with Joe Biden and what the real problems are here. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Everyday prices are too high. Food, rent, gas, back to school clothes. That is called Bidenomics. A loaf of bread costs 50% more today. Ground beef is up almost 50%. There's not much left at the end of the month. Bidenomics is working. The price of housing has gone up. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And we are very proud of Bidenomics. Boom. But hey, 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 hey. You know, we all have that friend that when we're in trouble, they think they're helping us, but what they're really doing is digging our hole deeper. Ever have a friend like that? Well, Kamala's got one, and he's Bernie Sanders. And her, her flipping and flopping on all these key issues like fracking, uh, um, 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 uh, the boil wall, pay no attention to it. She doesn't mean a word of it. She's just saying what she's got to say to get elected. No, he actually said this. I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. Her views are not mine, but I do consider her progressive. What did you say? I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. 
Her views are not mine, but I do consider her progressive. <laughs> Freudian slip? I think not. If you remember, let's go back months ago. I said, and I didn't want to get too crazy with it because I don't like being some of those. I see some of these preachers that do political insight and they want to bring it from a prophetic and God told me this about Donald Trump and God gave me this revelation and I I don't I don't get into all of that. But I did see something going on here that was pretty clear to me. It it it, it, it lines up with an account in scripture, the, the story of Esther. And uh Esther became queen. The king did not know she was Jewish. There was a nasty dude in the land named Haman who was in tight with the king and he hated the Jews and he wanted to kill the Jews and the king said, okay, go for it. So he erects these gallows because he's going he's gonna to wipe out the Jews. And then finally Esther tells the king, I'm Jewish, he's going to kill me. Of course, immediately Haman's like, no, 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 I, I didn't know, no, I didn't know Esther was, I didn't know your queen was. And Haman ended up hanging from his own gallows. And I said, there is a verse in the Bible that says, the curse causeless shall not come. And we know that Donald Trump, since 2015, when he took that escalator ride, it has been a slugfest constantly, constantly. They're trying to throw him in jail. They're all these things they keep throwing at him, two impeachments. They've tried to kill him. And I said, there's something about this year that I get this sense that everything they throw on him, this is like hangman. Haman, rather, and they're trying to put him on the gallows. And I said, it's going to flip, and they're going to hang by their own gallows. And that's what we see happening. We have Nate Silver now basically saying it's going to be a runaway for Donald Trump, and, and, and even CNN prognosticators are saying the same thing now. Everything they have thrown at Trump, and it keeps boomeranging and backfiring. They even tried to replace the person he was going to run against by getting Kamala Camilla to knife Joe Biden in the back with the help of Nancy Botox Pelosi, Chuck E. Cheese Schumer, Barack Misobotamus. And the Trump is still standing. And there's going to be a debate. And it's going to be, oh, so good. But there's Bernie Sanders basically saying she hasn't changed, which means you take all of her previously stated positions that she's even written books about. No border security. We can't tell people keep out. No fracking. Kill the economy. She and Biden and that Bidenomics are the reason you have inflation and the reason we can't afford groceries. Donald Trump in the debate needs to draw her out and just let her cackle and talk. Because the more she talks, the more she sinks in the polls and reality sets in, this was a bad move.